Okay, here we have 10.4, finding all possible rational zeros using the rational zeros theorem problem type one, actually. Okay, so in this particular problem, we have to use what's called the rational zeros theorem. And what that tells us is that even if we have no idea what any of the zeros are, based on this theorem, we can get an idea of some possibilities, okay? So, I mean, everything is a possibility right now, not knowing this theorem, right? So, that's a bunch of things. We definitely want to shorten that list from infinite, infinity to like a tangible number, like maybe 10, okay? Or sometimes a smaller list, like four. Now, how do we do that? It's, you usually use what's called P over Q. And so you'll see me use this a lot, P over Q. P is the factors of the constant. And then Q is the factors of the leading term or leading coefficient. So before I can figure out what the P and the Q are, I have to make sure that my function is again in descending order. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this in the correct order. So we need the positive 9x cubed, then the positive x squared, then the positive 4x, and then the positive 1. Now, this is where I'm going to get my q from, and this is where I'm going to get my p from. Okay? So when I do p over q, it's going to be, well, the only factors of 1 is 1. However, the factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9. I need to find all the factors of 9. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm making a tree for both 1 and 9, but there's nothing that multiplies to give me 1 other than 1 itself, right? 1 times 1 is the only thing that will give me 1. So this doesn't really help me. For 9, we have 1 times 9, and then we have 3 times 3. So I have the different numbers of 1, 3, and 9. You don't need to repeat any number twice. So then what is the list? Now remember, you could have positives of these or negatives of these, okay? So in the front of the fraction, I always put plus or minus because it could be any sign variation of these numbers. And how do I get my, my um, values? You basically take each numerator value and place it over each denominator value and don't repeat anybody in the list. So I'm gonna say plus or minus one over one, which is one, plus or minus one over three, which is one third, plus or minus one over nine, which is one ninth. And this is the list. So there are actually six numbers in this list. If you don't wanna use the plus or minus symbol, then you have to say one or negative one, one third or negative one third, one ninth or negative one ninth. So there's actually six possible values that could be zeros of this polynomial. It's not saying they are all zeros. It's just saying if one of these, if you're gonna have a zero, a real zero, it's gonna be one of these guys, okay? Um, and not a real zero, but a rational zero. Rational zero means either a whole number or a fraction. No square roots, no imaginaries, nothing like that, okay? Just the rational ones. Now, same thing here. So I am missing a term, but that's not necessarily important. As long as I have my leading coefficient, which is a one, which will give me the Q, and my constant term, which will give me the P, okay? And you should have plus or minus, because remember, one times one is one, but negative one times negative one is also one. That's why we need the sign variations on all of these, because you never know what it's, what you're gonna need, okay? So then for here, when I do the P over Q, I'm gonna get plus or minus, and the factors of P are one and three. Those are the only things that multiply to give us three is one and three. And Q, the only thing that multiplies to give us one is one. So when I do all of the different variations, one over one is one. 3 over 1 is 3, and this is it. If you don't want to use that symbol, you can expand 
it and just write all four out. The way you write your answer in there is completely up to you, okay? Sometimes if I don't um, have a good clicker or my eyes are not, um, not working properly, then I don't use this button. I usually just go one comma negative one comma three comma negative three. Um, but now let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So we're gonna do the same thing as we tried to do before. So this is already in descending order. So Q is gonna come from here, P is going to come from there. And when we do P over Q, we're going to have the factors of seven, which are one and seven, and then the factors of three, which are one and three. Um, then when we do all of the different combinations, we get one over one, which is one, one over three, which is one third, seven over one, which is seven, and then seven over three, which is seven thirds. So again, you can use this as your answer if you use the plus or minus button. If not, you'll have to write out all eight individually, the positive and the negative versions. So you could also write in this. And that's it. So that is how you do the rational zeros theorem.